Okay, so this is very strange. I was checking the edit of the Samsung S95C QD OLED I've bought myself to review, and according to the Muridio 7G 8K signal generator, the TV only has an HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of 40 gigabits per second, instead of the full HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of 48 gigabits per second we've come to expect from high-end TVs in 2023. In fact, even the step-down Samsung S90C QD OLED as well as last year's S95B both carry the full HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of 48 gigabits per second. I looked at ratings review of the Samsung S95C, which stated that the TV supports the full HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of 48 gigabits per second. So could it simply be a difference between UK and US models? Well, there's only one way to find out for myself. Because I've already bought the UK version of the Samsung S95C, I'm not going to purchase the US model and get it shipped to the UK where I'm based, which, from previous experience, cost an arm and a leg. So I did what any investigative journalist would do, and bought a plane ticket to New York, with the sole intention of checking out the HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of a US model of the Samsung S95C. I touched down at JFK Airport, then took an Uber to the nearest Best Buy, which fortunately had a 77-inch Samsung S95C QD OLED on display. Thanks to the kind folks at Best Buy who helped me hook up the TV to my Muridio 7G 8K signal generator, I can now confirm that the HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of the Samsung S95C in the USA is also restricted to 40 gigabits per second. The culprit seems to be the One Connect box. It turned out that even last year's Samsung QN95B Neo QLED Mini LED TV, which I didn't manage to review, also had an HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of 40 gigabits per second, as reported by my esteemed Belgian colleague Eric Bigmans. Ironically, the Samsung S90C and S95B QD OLEDs, as well as this year's QN95C 4K flagship Neo QLED TV, are not equipped with a One Connect box and therefore offer the full 48 gigabits per second of HDMI 2.1 bandwidth. At this point, I want to make it very clear that only super high-end PC gamers could be affected by a lower HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of 40 gigabits per second, which is perhaps the reason why some users are encountering problems with stable 4K 144Hz video signal from certain graphics cards displayed on the Samsung S95C. If you are a console player, the Xbox Series X is capped at 40 gigabits per second anyway, while the PS5 is even lower at 32 gigabits per second. Away from gaming and on the media side, even the most demanding content from 4K Blu-rays or the Apple TV 4K box won't come close to pushing the limits of HDMI 2.1, since the output resolution is not 4K 120Hz. With that out of the way, we verified that the Samsung S95C is the first QD OLED TV or monitor we've measured in our own test room to carry the second generation QD OLED panel from Samsung Display. As evidenced by the more prominent blue hump on the spectral power distribution chart, just like every Samsung QD OLED TV we've tested, our self-bought S95C retail unit came fairly well calibrated from factory to D65 white point in the most accurate filmmaker mode. In this configuration, HDR peak brightness measured 1330 nits on a 10% window and 260 nits full fill, representing a 30% increase over the figures obtained on last year's S95B, fulfilling the claims made by panel maker Samsung Display at CES earlier this year. The beauty about QD OLED display technology is that such high brightness is achieved without the help of a white subpixel hence allowing for high color luminance at the same time. While LG Electronics has developed algorithmic color boosting to address this issue on its flagship G3 MLA OLED, there remain instances where QD OLED's natively superior color luminance would shine through. For example, when an HDR title does not contain ST2086 metadata, or in game mode where picture processing has to be cut down to reduce input lag. On the other side of the contrast ratio spectrum, one of the criticisms levied towards last year's S95B was slightly crushed shadow detail out of the box, and in an attempt to address this issue, Samsung seemed to have overcompensated somewhat on the S95C, 
resulting in raised EOTF tracking around 10% video stimulus. As a consequence, faces in certain low-light scenes in HDR mode would appear lifted and mildly lacking in depth. We tried adjusting the RGB values in the 20-point white balance controls, but did not manage to completely flatten the bump. We also experimented with lowering the shadow detail setting without any success, since this would decrease the overall scene brightness, as well as crush some shadows in the darkest regions. On a positive note, the Samsung S95C continued to be free of near-black chrominance overshoot artifacts. This is another strength of QD OLED courtesy of the absence of white subpixels. Here, you may also be able to see that colors in very dark HDR scenes would look slightly desaturated on the Samsung S95C compared to a reference monitor, whereas the same dark colors on the LG G3 appeared somewhat oversaturated following a recent firmware update. Talking about colors, accuracy in SDR filmmaker mode on our Samsung S95C retail sample was very good after calibration, translating to natural and cinematic colors in real-world viewing. Like on all Samsung televisions, the color space auto setting on the S95C doesn't actually auto-switch when playing HDR content, and will always adopt the color gamut value under the color space custom submenu. If left at its default setting of DCI P3, color saturation tracking would be more accurate to P3 standards, but the RAC 2020 color gamut coverage would be clamped at 76%, instead of utilizing up to 91% RAC 2020 as empowered by QD OLED technology. In addition, the DCI P3 color gamut setting manifested more posterization at certain tones, whereas the BT2020 setting presented smoother 10 bit gradation. Bottom line is, both color gamut settings have their respective pros and cons, and until Samsung implements proper color space auto-switching in line with other OLED brands, users will be forced to put up with some downsides whichever setting they choose. Screen uniformity was top-notch on the retail sample we bought ourselves. Not only on brighter full-field grey slides which didn't manifest any bending, dirty screen effect or color tinting, but also near black that's among the cleanest we've seen on a consumer OLED TV. Motion handling on the Samsung S95C exhibited similar quirks to what we've observed before on previous TVs from the South Korean brand. On our review unit, if picture clarity was disabled, there would be noticeable telecynic judder in 24 frames per second movies, such as in these slow tracking shots from Skyfall. Because of this, Engaging picture clarity was absolutely necessary to activate 5.5 pull-down and eradicate the telecynic judder in 24p films. We made sure to zero out the judder reduction setting under the custom submenu to avoid introducing Sopra effect and interpolation artifacts. However, with picture clarity enabled for 24fps content, the Samsung S95C would apply interpolation for one frame before switching it off for the remainder of the scene causing visible microstutter immediately after certain scene cuts. Because it's not going to be easy for me to demonstrate this issue in real time due to YouTube's compression, here I'm advancing frame by frame in DaVinci Resolve, my video editing software of choice, to show you instances where the Samsung S95C was dropping frames. The 24p motion hiccup was fleeting and varied from title to title, so casual viewers may not notice it. It's just that our eyes are more sensitive than Elon Musk's ears when someone mentions Zuckerberg. Motion interpolation with 50Hz broadcast material we get in parallel countries such as the UK seemed to have been improved from last year, incurring less microstutter artifacts than before. Clear motion black frame insertion or BFI remained a no-go for us, due to excessive light loss and flicker, not to mention forced interpolation with 50Hz content which is Samsung's workaround to mask the inevitable frame rate conversion judder caused by 60Hz BFI. In terms of video processing, the Samsung S95C QD OLED did not handle low bitrate material as well as LG and Sony OLEDs for several reasons. 1. There continues to be no smooth gradation setting on the television, which means in-content posterization in heavily compressed material will be fully exposed without mitigation. Two. Overscan cannot be disabled in standard definition resolution on the S95C, 
for example on this SMPT RP123 test card in 576i, leading to a more zoomed in and slightly softer standard depth presentation. And 3. Although the TV correctly detected and processed 3-2 cadence in film-based interlaced material, it failed to do so for 2-2 cadence which is far more common in the United Kingdom and other PAL regions, even with film mode enabled. Thankfully, high-definition broadcast and 1080p Blu-rays were upscaled competently to come across reasonably sharp, helped in no small part by QD OLED's insanely high contrast. Native 10-bit relation was very good, with minimal posterization seen in the skies of the Martian. So the lack of a smooth gradation decontouring filter isn't a problem at all when watching 4K Blu-ray movies. With game mode engaged, Input lag measured as low as 9.2 milliseconds at 60 frames per second, dropping to 4.6 milliseconds at 120 frames per second, which is as responsive as you can get on a consumer TV for playing fast action games. Four HDMI 2.1 ports are available, each providing 40 gigabits per second of HDMI 2.1 bandwidth as covered in the intro to this video, together with 24 gigabits per second of DSC or display stream compression. On the latest UK firmware of 1212 at the time we filmed this video in July 2023, there is no true HDIG mode on the Samsung S95C QD OLED despite the game HDR setting claiming to support HDIG. The default HDR10 tone curve in game mode would roll off instead of hard clip at the top end, and was always over brightened versus the PQ standard requiring some manual adjustments to the ST2084 and shadow detail settings to achieve a more accurate image when playing HGIG compliant games. Due to the presence of a roll-off in the EOTF tone curve, the checkerboard pattern in the HDR calibration app on the Xbox Series X would only start to disappear after pushing the maximum tone map luminance and maximum full frame tone map luminance values to above 2000 nits leading to a slightly washed out HDR presentation in HGIG compliant games. We recommend setting both max TML and max FFTML to 1300 nits, as well as min TML to 0 nits as always to obtain greater pop and depth in HGIG compliant games. VRR including unofficial NVIDIA G-Sync compatibility provided battery smooth gameplay without noticeable tearing or frame drops up to the 120Hz refresh rate we tried. But similar to all consumer TVs we've tested, some VRR flicker was inevitable in a handful of VRR games during more sedate scenes and on static menus. 444 Chroma was fully reproduced in PC mode, and native 10-bit gradation was good judging from this grey ramp in the display HDR app. Just like on all QD OLED displays, the red, green and blue subpixels on the Samsung S95C are arranged in a triangle contributing to color fringing on fine text, so most people should refrain from using the TV as a PC monitor. Since no Samsung TV supports Dolby Vision, naturally you won't be able to play games in Dolby Vision from the Xbox Series X on the S95C. The panel of the Samsung S95C was reinforced to a more robust degree than the step-down S90C and last year's S95B, yet the TV still managed to maintain a uniformly slim profile. The improved anti-glare coating appeared more neutral in tint, suppressing reflections effectively though still turning grey when hit by light directly. Despite the thin chassis, the Samsung S95C was able to generate relatively impressive sound, delivering sufficient bass as well as pleasant mids and highs to satisfy casual viewing, especially if you use the amplify function to widen the sound stage. The Tizen-based smart TV interface on the Samsung S95C feels snappier than on last year's S95B, but remains clunkier and more confusing than the UI adopted by rival brands, especially if you just want to switch input sources, or adjust the settings using the pad-down smart remote. All the key streaming apps and UK catch-up TV services are on board, although when we fired up the BBC iPlayer app to watch Wimbledon in UHD, the HLG HDR presentation on the Samsung S95C clearly lacked vibrancy compared to the LG G3. The footages were displayed out of sync since they are played through the TV's respective internal apps. After further investigation, we found that the S95C was mapping HLG HDR video signal incorrectly, be it through the internal TV apps or from external HDMI sources, 
resulting in a muted picture which was not rectifiable through the TV settings. So hopefully Samsung can look into this and fix it once and for all. Given that Sky and the BBC output their HDR programs in HLG format in the United Kingdom. To sum up, the Samsung S95C is one of the best TVs you can buy in 2023, representing an upgrade over last year's S95B, with 30% brighter light output thanks to the latest second generation QD OLED panel from Samsung Display, less crushing of shadow detail, better tone mapping of HDR movies graded conservatively within a 4000 nit container, as well as slightly less sluggish smart TV experience. It also retains all the picture quality attributes we have come to like so much about QD OLED display technology, such as class leading screen uniformity, cleaner near black handling without flashing artifacts, wide viewing angles without off axis tinting, and high color luminance. Therefore, it receives our highly recommended award. Of course, no TV is perfect, and shortcomings on the Samsung S95C include suboptimal motion processing, lack of Dolby Vision support, incorrect HLG HDR mapping, and clunky smart TV interface. The lack of an accurate HDIG mode and full 48GB per second HDMI 2.1 bandwidth are also particularly frustrating on the gaming front. Given the S95C's class-leading input lag and natively high color luminance which would otherwise have established the QD OLED as the best gaming TV on the market today. If you are undecided about which OLED television to buy, one place where you can get good advice is at Richer Sounds, a trusted British AV retailer with more than 50 stores in the UK, as well as a secure e-commerce platform for online purchases. If you join the company's VIP club, you will also get 6 years warranty included on the vast majority of TVs. So visit your local Richer Sounds store or online at richersounds.com for your next TV purchase. Thanks again for your support. Ok, if you are considering buying the Samsung S95C QD OLED, you may also be interested in the LG G3 MLA OLED, in which case you might want to check out my side-by-side -side comparison video by clicking here.